<laughs> hey, you remember how last week we were like, wow, what a crazy week. Stop saying that. Um, <laughs> for those of you who have lived under um, some sort of rock, boulder, some deep cavern, for those of you who have been frozen in carbonite, um, we envy you. In the last week, the President of the United States um, tested positive for having the human malware. Um, he apparently tested positive before the debate, which was a complete night show. Um, yeah, that debate was whoo. So uh, uh, he tested positive before he went to, to be with all those people. Um, and shout at them. Yeah. Um, dozens of people. Well, not dozens, but at least a dozen members. And he went and did an indoor fundraiser. Yeah, did that. Um, all those Which was a buffet. Yeah. <laughs> all those people at that Supreme Court. Here's our, our nominee thing. Yeah, all of those people are coming down with it. Um, yeah. Kelly and we're had, not doing any contact tracing because yeah. testing is how you get cases. Yeah. Kellyanne Conway came down with it, and we wouldn't have known it had not for her teenage daughter gone on TikTok and told everybody her and mom you know had what her it. daughter told everybody today? Oh, yeah. This poor kid. That her daughter said she told her, that Kellyanne told her her test came back negative, and then they spent the whole day together. This woman lied to her own daughter, and now her daughter is also sick. That kid is 15. Yep. We and need help that kid. I don't know what to do. And she's also, uh, the, the, the president is, he went to the hospital. They gave him a lot of drugs. They gave him some steroids. So many drugs. Oh, yeah. He is ripped night steroids right now. Yeah. Um, Which is why he thinks he feels great. Right. So he checked himself out of the hospital today. Went back to the White House. The first thing he did was take off his mask. He's still yeah. infected. And have a little photo shoot for the gram, you know. Um, when he comes off those meds. Yeah. You see, this is the, what, what people are the pointing out. Gasping for air is trending. Yeah, that's trending on Twitter. Gasping. Yeah, what, what 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 is happening is this is following the same trajectory as um, Herman Cain when he got infected at a rally, and then he was he's fine. I got it. I'm feeling bad, but I'm feeling better. I'm feeling great. Then he was suddenly dead. July 27th, he was like, I feel great. July 20, July 30th, he was dead. Yep. Um, I mean, it, speak, Kellyanne Conway's daughter. Went on TikTok and said, yeah, he's way worse than they're telling you guys. Yeah, and I believe that. Like, they did not want him out of the hospital. No. Nope. The doctor has been real cagey, having press conferences. They're like, when was his last negative test? Oh, well, we can't talk about that because of HIPAA. But we can tell you that he's strong as a horse and he has the biggest penis I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, what does his chest x-ray look like? HIPAA. Big penis. HIPAA. Something's it's, not right there. Yeah, it's it's. The, we, we, I think the next week is going to go one of two ways. Hmm. Either he's going to decide he's fine and start having night rallies ripped on steroids and just throw himself a super spreader party, hmm. or that cycle, the Herman Cain cycle, is going to take hold. He's going to crash hard, and they're going to be scrambling doing some weekend at Bernie sh and kind of like pretend he's okay <laughs> because he said he beat this thing, and they all said he beat this thing. So they're going to be doing like those, you know, that little stage photo shoot they did, the pictures 10 minutes apart of him working very hard, signing blank pieces of paper. Mm. He's going to be working way too hard to be seen in public. Yeah. Or both, or he thinks he's great and he throws himself a rally and he Nine. passes out at the podium. It's gonna, it's, it's, we are in for a wild October regardless. He yeah. still thinks he's going to the next debate. Yeah. And they're giving Kamala night for wanting a plexiglass divider between him and Pence. They're like, oh, she's scared. Yeah, because y'all are a petri dish. Yep. 
the administration and campaign, you're just a big old petri dish licking each other. You are all diseased. You should have bells and have to yell unclean when you walk around. <laughs> so yeah, we're, we're we're having a great time in America. I made that joke once before and YouTube got real mad at me, so I look forward to the comments. <laughs> Apparently that made me, I forget, racist? Ooh-la-la. Um... So yeah, it's it's um, it's great. It's it's uh, it's 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 great. We're having a great time. I'm proud to be American. Well, with that in mind, there are others. <laughs> Mike, the, the doctor didn't actually say anything about Trump's dick. No, that was no. hyperbole, Mike. Yeah. But yeah. but the thing is, you could believe that that might have been true, couldn't you? <laughs> Yeah. You had to ask, and that's the fucked up thing. Yeah. <sighs> but that's not the only stupid, shit, horrible shit going on. That that's why we're here, because um, there. Although I don't know how we compete anymore, they are really raising for, the goddamn stakes. We're here for kinder, gentler, stupid shit. Yeah. Oh. Less apocalyptic, stupid shit. Each week. They also got mad at me for talking about the apocalypse. Sorry. Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And this this first story, I'm I'm sw- this one made me so mad. Um Okay. There is a genre I occasionally indulge in on YouTube. Um it, it especially when I'm at my low at a low point. It never fails to make me happy. And that genre is African gray parrots cursing like sailors. It is never not good. So that's why this story seems to be the African grays that have real filthy mouths. So so, so that's that seems that's why this 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 story is kind of is kind of honking me off. Because I have Um, a friend who had an African gray who would call everybody an asshole. Parrots in Wildlife Park moved after swearing at visitors. Why? No! That's... Can you blame them? They did nothing wrong! Yeah, humanity sucks. Can you blame them? Five parrots have been removed from public view at a British Wildlife Park after they started swearing at customers. Foul mouth birds were split up after they launched a number of different expletives at visitors and staff just days after being donated to the Lincolnshire Wildlife Park. It just went ballistic. They were all swearing. We were- the thing is, if, you, if you're not familiar with British culture, they are so much more creative with their swears than we are. They have a cornucopia of swears that we won't even use. The venue's chief executive, Steve Nichols, says, I got called a fat twat every time I walk past. There you go. <laughs> Although I think to, real, to really be British, you have to pronounce it twat. Um, the African gray parrots named Eric, Jade, Elsie, Tyson, and Billy were given to the Here's park. Your problem. You gave them popular kid names. And we're given to the park. Those are football player cheerleader names. Um, they were given to the park from five different owners within the same week and shared a quarantining facility before being placed on display. But the staff immediately noticed the bird's propensity to fly off the handle. Quote, they literally said within a very short period of time, started swearing at each other. Nicholas said, fuck off. It's the most common one. Very <laughs> easy for them to learn. Most customers enjoy the talent once the birds were displayed. The visitors were giving them as much back as what they were giving to them. I mean, they should like they should charge more for this exhibit. <laughs> the best part is these were five different parrots from five different owners. And they were teaching it to each other to swear. Like I don't think they should take them off display. They should just charge an extra five dollars to see them. Because people would pay it. Yeah. We would pay it. Well, five pounds. I would be, I would go every would day. It. I would go every day. Cause every time I started feeling sad. I would just go see the sweary parrots. Just go get told fuck off by a parrot. You feel better about it. It's so it's it's so amazing. I don't know if you've experienced this. It's it's a joy. Words do not 
contained. I love that they separated them like my mom used to do with my sister and I in church when we were acting up. <laughs> Where like she'd get up and make one of us trade places. So she was between us. <laughs> it just it makes me happy. I think they should just they should just make it an extra five pounds to see that exhibit. Right, I think yeah, it'll make you know? That'll make money. Well, moving on to another part of the world. Um, hey, in case you have you're... British accents, do you think? Oh yeah, they do. Have, the, 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 have you? If you've ever watched, the, there's one of them on YouTube that is a British is African so gray, and he he curses in a British accent. It's great. I um, will pay ten pounds to see that. Forget five. So, uh, in case you haven't been. Keeping track of things. Americans are welcome almost nowhere right now because we are diseased. We are not allowed to go anywhere. Because we live in a Petri dish. Yeah. Um, which is causing all sorts of havoc in the world. Um, I'm kind of amazed at this next story. We, we honest to God, have a, a girlfriend who lives in Canada. I, I didn't think that even, that ever happened. But, um... For real, yo. Visiting Surrey girlfriend cost U.S. man $2,000. Man didn't report to customs. Find boat seas told to leave. Visiting his Surrey girlfriend will cost a Washington state man $2,000 as a result of his unauthorized entry into Canada in violation of border rules. The RCMP said members of the Forces Marine Shiprider Program were patrolling along the Marine border. Work, 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 work. Don't encourage him. He can't hear me. You have headphones on. Dog ears. Of course he can hear you. He can hear everything. Work, work. Loki. Loki. Loki, come here. Stop it. Okay, good boy, you sit. Anyway, Royal Canadian Mounted Police said members of the Forces Marine Shiprider Program were patrolling along the Marine border in the Southern Gulf Islands when they spotted a cabin cruiser out of Bellingham anchored in the Crescent Beach Channel. The police said the boat's occupants were identified as a 49-year-old man from Bellingham and a 50-year-old woman from Surrey. He had left home that morning to pick her up, but failed to report his border crossing. He was seized under the Quarantine Act, and his he was arrested under the Quarantine Act, and his boat seized. Um, That's an expensive booty call. Seriously! Who was taken to Crescent Beach Marina with plans to self-isolate and get a COVID test if she experiences any symptoms in the next 14 days. Yeah, right. Um, Hope uh, she had that WAP. I, I, <laughs> don't, don't try to be down with the kids. Don't. I'm down with the kids. I'm hip. I'm with it. I, I do not believe she is going to. If she's willing to to break all violence, she's not going to self isolate. She's not going to quarantine. Oh yeah, I told. I'm totally going to self isolate. Yeah, for real though. I can still. I can still like go to the club though, right? <laughs> but what if I don't talk to anybody? Um, border's been closed since March. Canada began cracking down heavily on U.S. visitors in July, restricting routes for those heading to Alaska. Because we're diseased. Man, dude, it sucks, but welcome to the hellscape. Um, you remember in the V for Vendetta movie where he's talking about how the whole world has shunned the United States because of a plague? Well, England, but yes. No, no, no. Because he does a whole rant about the ulcerated oh, yeah. sphincter of Acerica. And, oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. This. And we were all like, that's absurd. That would never happen. 
and then we elected the stupidest man in the world. I, I was my nose is very itchy today. Sorry. I was mentioning earlier today on Twitter. It's it's he astonishes me in that he always does the stupid thing. Always. He would think the law of averages. Yeah. He would accidentally like, say like a broken clock is right twice a day. He's not. Never. He is always, always, always doing the stupid thing. Always. And this is a side effect to Hermit. You can't see your girlfriend who lives in Canada. No. I love how he's like, he takes a boat around the fucking was border. Well, it's not clever because he's like, what? I didn't know I was, well, I wasn't doing anything wrong. It's just, you know, I'm just. And like, I can't friend. imagine. I am very, very happy that I am married to my sugar daddy at this point in time because I was depressed living alone in normal times. Mm. I hated living alone. So like if I was stuck alone literally all the time right now, I'd be a train wreck. So like I fucking get it. It sucks. Too bad but, though. Yeah, but you know what's the ventilator sucks more. Yeah. And killing people because you're dumb sucks more. And now you don't got a boat anymore. You don't have a boat. Well, we are getting back. It's it's uh, this is something that keeps on happening. I'm sure the people playing bingo in the Discord tonight are going to be happy about this one. Um, this just keeps fucking happening. We always we have to keep doing stories about it. Watch your damn kids. Twelve year old boy causes crash while driving mom's stolen car. <clears throat> I don't understand. Did it ever occur to you to steal a car when you were a kid? No. That shit never occurred to me. No. I'm not going to ask him because, yes, almost certainly it did. Because wow. <laughs> he was a little delinquent. I mean... Like, who are these fucking kids today? When I was a kid, the shit I was... I, the, the mischief I got into was I took a door off its hinges because I found a screwdriver. Okay. That was the mischief I got. My parents came home. There's a door. I couldn't get it. I couldn't get it back up and put it in place itself, but I could take it down because I had a screwdriver. My sisters and I were too busy trying to kill each other to get into shit like this. 12 year old caused a chain reaction crash. And you can see the back of that thing is fucked. Oof. Um, while driving his mother's vehicle without permission. Well, He's 12. <laughs> he, he couldn't drive it with permission either. Do you think his mom might have said yes in some scenario? Crash happened Monday at 6.30 p.m. on Sand Lake Road when the boy rear-ended a Jeep while driving the 2010 BMW. <gasps> Ooh, it was a Beamer. Wow. A Mazda and a Dodge were also involved in the chain reaction. All four vehicles were able to pull in the parking lot until authorities arrived. Boy was taken to an area <clears throat> with non-life-threatening injuries. Also cited for driving without a license and careless driving. Uh, without permission. Without permit. You don't no, no, that's not how that works. You can't be like, Mom, can I have the car? And you're 12. And she's like, sure. Just make sure you put gas in it before you bring it back. No, that's sure, not baby. that's not how you you can't. Do you need okay. to catch some Pokemans? Go ahead, honey. Ninja in the in the channel says, "Oh, it's a BMW, so at least no one expected the kid to use turn signals." <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking like it's a Beamer. We all know what kind of people tend to own Beamers, right? Yeah. Well, like, actually, that kid's in some shit. That picture in the in the the story, I had to look again. Um, that's the Jeep he rear-ended. Right. That, that car is fucked. Wow, your insurance is going to get a workout, lady. How do you, like, and I mean, I guess it's common enough that insurance companies had to have heard this. Like, I'm picture, picturing the 
the farmers commercials. Like, do they have a little sculpture of a little kid in a car? Like, <laughs> what do you tell your insurance adjuster? Well, yeah, little Timmy stole the car. They probably okay. heard that. They're like, oh yeah, okay, yeah, we 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 yeah we we. Oh yeah, we have a code for that now. <laughs> Like maybe it was because every cars were all manual shift when we were kids. Maybe that's why we didn't steal the car, and now cars are just easier to drive. I don't know. Mine wasn't. This, uh, we this had, never crossed my mind. We had when I was very young. We had a station wagon. Yes, it had wood panels on the side, and it was automatic. Then we had an Aerostar, and it was an automatic. Then we had a Windstar, and it was an automatic. Our, we always had automatics because mom. Could not drive stick. We were like an Oldsmobile Buick family. We were Ford. We always got Except my, my dad usually had a Jeep for work because he worked construction. But like the family car was usually like an Oldsmobile or a Buick because my parents liked cars as big and as heavy as possible. Like if, if they could legally just drive a fucking tank. That, that's something that's kind of died is, you know, the family car brand because... <laughs> It used to be, you know, we all oh, I'll go out to the dealership and get a new Ford this year. And now it's like, I'll take whatever I can fucking afford. Yeah. That has four wheels and a, and a steering wheel on it. You also can no longer get a car that's basically a, a road legal tank. No, that's. But like my dad is spinning in his coffin. The fact that I drive a roller, the roller skate I do now, because he firmly believes that you are not safe in any car that couldn't be shot at. And just have the bullets bounce off. So, so yeah, you've got to keep an eye on your kids. You proper, gotta watch kids. Proper keep supervision. Keep eye up. Um, <laughs> Apparently, we need to start hanging car keys on the fucking ceiling. Your kids should not be driving. No, that's not safe. Even if you are needing them to drive you to the ice cream shop because you're drunk. Oh, no. <laughs> A stepdad got too drunk to drive, then made his 13-year-old stepdaughter drive them to a shop to buy ice cream. Uh, yeah, Javier Martinez Aguilar, 42, allegedly ordered the youngster to get behind the wheel on September 9th so he could indulge in a frozen treat from a store close to their home. The girl taught, caught the attention of local police when she failed to yield for one of their cruisers which had right away, it almost crashed into them. Officers pulled the SUV over and were just stunned to, stunned to discover how old the driver was. I mean, good. You got a designated driver. That's not how that works, though. Well, your designated driver has to be a legal driver. We got drunk ice cream the other night because it was our wedding anniversary. <laughs> but I was the only one drunk. So he was driving. I just, his the girl's older sister who had who had her driver's license came to pick the youngster up and take her home. So you had access to somebody. You had an option. That was the other not option is you just don't go out for ice cream. And I know, I know that sucks. Like if you gave that to me as an option, I would hurl expletives at you that you have not even heard of yet. If you said, just go without ice cream, I'd be very angry, but sometimes that's your only option. I have had a whole lot of very bad drunk ideas in my life. Never, ever has any of them ever been, let's put a 13 year old behind the wheel of a car. No, never. I'm quite proud. Of, I'm quite proud that even, and I have been legendarily blasted at some conventions. <laughs> Because that that is that is part of that that is our heritage that is our culture. I mean, to be fair, at conventions you don't have access to a lot of thirteen year olds. Thank God. Yes. Jesus Christ. But um, like, there's not a lot that you can ask to drive you around. Right. But you know, I we've been. I mean, that is that is that that is our 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 you know it's our culture. Uh, Larpers being fantastically drunk. To the point, people are concerned about our livers. That's just that's just what we do. It's it's our it's our tradition, it's our heritage. Um, but even then, I have still not gone. Hey, kid, 
want to drive a car? I need some ice cream. <laughs> and I need you to take me. I saw myself on video. Yeah, I saw myself on video drunk for the first time because I decided to make a TikTok while I was drunk on our anniversary. And um <laughs> Yeah. Don't do that. You think when you're drunk that you sound normal. Like you just I, I just sound like me. No, you, you don't. don't. You don't. You really don't. So, um, next up, this I I kind of, they kind of had a good idea. Well, it was a terrible idea, but, you know, they it, it, it sh they kind of had a plan here. They were just incredibly bad at it. Three blow up ATM in Chinese restaurant flee without cash. Philadelphia. Three men blew up an ATM in a Chinese takeout restaurant in Philadelphia while the establishment was still open, but were unable to get any cash. Men entered the Golden Chinese American Takeout Restaurant in Northwest Philadelphia shortly after 9 p.m. and ordered food. They then placed some kind of explosive device which damaged the ATM and the window and knocked items off the shelf behind the counter. The three went back into the establishment, but were unable to remove the cash box that was still inside the damaged ATM. The three then fled, one on a bicycle and the other two on foot. So one of them was like, fucking see ya! Also, did they, they didn't have a getaway car. Right, what was your... <laughs> Hop up on, hop up on the handlebars. Let's go. Because this wasn't a stealth crime. This was not. That you just walk away looking cool. You blew the shit up. Yeah, I mean, you 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 need you need a baby driver for one of these kind of things, you know? Yeah. Somebody out there like, sitting there, behind the know, wheel there, with like the headphones on. Where, and... like, you're, you're, the whole idea is to look casual and cool. But that doesn't involve explosives. <laughs> and uh, these motherfuckers, they set the explosive, they run out of the restaurant. Everybody else is still stuck in there with a fucking explosive. They run back in and they didn't, they didn't even put enough boom in the thing to open up the ATM. And they ordered food. Do you think they expected to pick up their food after this? I just see them blowing up the you think ATM. One guy was going to be scooping up the money, and the other guy was going to be like, "Yeah, yeah, Kung Pao, that's me, <laughs> <laughs> sir." <laughs> Dude, just fuck these guys. I, I'm just, I love. They were probably yelling all of the curses at the motherfucker on the bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's hard. Not everybody can afford a car these days, but some crimes you really need a car. Speaking of Tara, I haven't done that in a while. <laughs> so I um, I was losing my touch. Uh, this dude. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. We all know that that one. Sometimes. That is very bad advice. Like with dating. Convicted felon arrested after four attempted carjackings causing crashes on I-4. This guy's story is amazing. 32-year-old Christopher Hendricks ran up to a gray... Chevy Colorado parked at the pumps of the Marathon gas station. The female driver was pumping gas at the time, and she sprayed Hendrix with gas from the hose when she saw him trying to get into her car. So he's already off to a gangbuster start. He's covered in flammable materials. Like so a model at a Zoolander. Deputies say the suspect then jumped into another victim's car, a burgundy town and country van that was parked nearby. 
Sheriff Judd said the owner of the van was standing outside the gas station and saw the suspect. The owner of the car, who has a concealed weapon permit, drew his gun and pointed it at the suspect. So now you're two, you're 0 for 2. You, yeah. You've been you covered. You probably just call it a day. You've been covered in gasoline. Someone's already pulled a fucking gun on you. Christy told 8. Uh, on news on your side during a telephone interview that he did not intend to shoot the man we're given a word of warning fucking lucky because he was covered in gas when you're covered in gasoline will you catch fire depends on proximity to the the with a gun you have to be really close okay. really really close Hendricks ran from the scene um Jed said the following two attempted carjackings following the two attempted carjackings at the gas station Hendricks ran onto State Road 557, jumped off the side of the overpass onto I-4 westbound, causing a box truck to slam on its brakes to avoid hitting him. The box truck was then rear-ended by a semi-truck. So we say a box truck, if you don't know this, uh, if you're not in America, you're thinking like lorry or something. A U-Haul truck, okay? And then a fucking 18-wheeler into the... Yeah, so... Um, the... The driver of a green Chevy pickup truck who witnessed the two trucks crash pulled over on the shoulder to help, and Hendricks then tried to get in the back seat of the truck. Police say the truck's doors were locked, so Hendricks then ran across I-4 to the other shoulder and got into the passenger seat of a red Chevy Equinox whose driver had also stopped to help. The driver of the Equinox took the keys out of the ignition and jumped out of the car. Deputies who had just responded to the area took Hendricks into custody. That is that is just an embarrassing day of crime. Holy shit. Oh, <laughs> the craze Bruce said, when did Mr. Bean turn to crime? Yeah, that is, that this, is sad. This is not what they mean by rideshare. No. This is not, that's not, that's not what. Everybody has to agree to that. <laughs> this fucking guy. Why are you trying to carjack by getting in the passenger side? Who does that? Hey, you know, the best part is the mugshot. Because <laughs> look at this smiling motherfucker. He's <laughs> like, hey, yeah. Uh, hey, yeah. Uh, I kind of, hey, hey, buddy. Hey. Hi, guys. Yeah, I kind of. Ever, ever have one of those days? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's me. I bet you're wondering how I got here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Um. Oh, even better. When Hendricks was placed in the back of a patrol car, he kicked out the rear window and attempted to escape. But you finally got in a car. Aren't you excited? You finally managed to get into a car. Uh, Hendricks is charged with one count of carjacking, one count of Grand Theft Auto, two counts of occupied burglary, one count of felony criminal mischief, and one count of escape. Oh my god. What? What precipitated this? What was so important that you needed a car that badly that what did you do and at some point don't you realize that the universe does not want you to have a car today <laughs> like at some point do you not look up at the sky and go are you trying to tell me to walk <laughs> this is this is a, this is this is a fucking sketch comedy is what this is yeah. This is, I swear to God, this is a kids in the hall sketch. <laughs> I could fucking see them doing this. A wing says he needed to poop, obviously. Wouldn't that just be a motherfucker? It would be. It would be. <laughs> like, do we not have one of those stories? Because the hat trick with that would We don't. We don't. It's but a shame. How? One, two, three, four. Six felonies. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> oh, my God. Four car 
carjackings. Uh, uh, uh. Yakety sax police in the background. Yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, just, at some point, you got to just take the hint, man. Oh, people are pointing out this happened in Florida, and people are saying he was desperate to get out of Florida. Okay, yeah. Fair That's enough. a good reason. Yeah. That is fair. yeah, we're all like, all of a sudden, we're all like, oh, yeah, dude. Uh, you know we, what? We, fair. We feel you. Oh, so th the first thing we learned this week is sometimes take the L. Yeah. Just, just quit while you're behind. I would have, I personally would have quit when I was covered in gasoline. Yeah, I think that's what I would just go home. I can walk. I can. But if, if I, that's not enough for you, immediately having a gun pulled on you should really do the trick. We've. That should be the end of your day of criming. We've learned that if you've set off an explosive in the course of a robbery, you better have a car waiting. Yeah. <laughs> your fucking bike, your fucking six P. You're not speed. doing the Ocean's Jeez. Eleven, everybody just walk away separately and look cool. No. Thing. No. Um we've learned that watch your kids or they'll take the car. Not watch your kids and they'll take the car. You can't do that. Damn kids stealing cars. <laughs> Damn kids driving the car when dad's drunk. Yeah. Shit's weird out there. And I love that he, like I said, I love that he thought to get a designated driver, but he made it a child. <laughs> and he had another one available who could have done it. You were halfway there, sir. Do you know what I think? I think he got drunk and forgot which daughter it was. Probably. You're one of, you gotta drive. Okay. Yeah, you I, drive me. You, which I don't care. You're the same person. I don't know. Um, we've actually learned there is someone does have a girlfriend who lives in Canada. Not anymore. <sighs> that I, and finally, we've learned that there are a few things in life that will bring you greater joy than than an African parrot swearing in a British accent. <laughs> That, that is, listen a lot of zoos are hurting financially right now yeah that is how you make extra money the sweary parrots yeah yeah you don't need to hide them away you need to put them on youtube <laughs> i mean that is that is what we need at this point in time you would bring so much joy to so many people i promise you if you are ever sad just go to YouTube and search for parrot swearing. I'm definitely going to do that later. It 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 is just hours and hours of every. It, you think it would stop being funny? But like if it, I could teach these cats to swear, I would. One one of my sister's in laws had a parrot, and she had a cat, and they taught the parrot to scream, "Help! Help! Help!" If the cat was too close to it well one day it was just like constant help 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 and she finally was like going up there at one point and walking by the stairs and she heard the parrot going here kitty 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 so cat was framed <laughs> <laughs> Simba would swear actually of the three I think Dottie would have the filthiest oh, mouth yeah because she's, Dottie she's is in death threat. Yeah, Dottie is an angry little peanut. Like she, Especially if you get Dorothy instead. Of yeah, Dorothy. like she has perpetual kitten face, but she is an angry little peanut. And she, I think she would invent new swears we haven't even heard yet. Ah. What joys do you think we'll have next week? <laughs> Let's not, let's not speculate. They did open a, a fucking mummy today, so... Yeah, yeah, that's... You know. Next week, we might just be chanting, Imhotep, Imhotep. I'm waiting for Brendan Fraser to save us. All, all I know is this week is an indictment of anyone who's ever said it can't get any worse. It can always get worse. 2020 Dear is proof of that, because we keep saying that. I also proposed that on New Year's, for like five years now, New Year's Eve, we've all been like, fuck this year. Next year can't possibly be worse. And it just keeps getting worse. 
I think this year we need to ring in 2021 and be like, I don't want any trouble. 